Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aaron Popke, Director of Public Affairs for the Packers, uh, working today on behalf of the Packers Hall of Fame Incorporated to congratulate and have a media session with uh, two upcoming inductees to the Packers Hall of Fame, Jordy Nelson and Josh Sitton. Uh, the way this is going to work today, we're going to have some introductory remarks from Packers Hall of Fame Incorporated President Tom Conop, and then we'll hear from Jordy, and then we'll hear from Josh, and then we'll open up the questions to Jordy and then Josh and, and any remaining questions. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Packers Hall of Fame Incorporated President Tom Conop. Tom, take it away. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's a, it's a great day. Uh, for the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame. Uh, it's with great excitement that uh, I present the 2023 uh, inductee class, Josh Sitton and Jordy Nelson. Uh, gentlemen, your, your play on the, the field spoke for itself. Uh, you exemplified professionalism at the highest level, ultimately, as we know, leading to a victory in Super Bowl 45, which was the highlight, I'm sure, one of the highlights of your careers and also a highlight of, of Packer fans. Uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say a thank you to our extremely knowledgeable selection committee uh, for all the hard work they do. Uh, it's a very arduous and a very detailed process that we go through uh, when we look at uh, selecting our inductees for the next year's induction class. Uh, when your names came up, uh, it, it, it was uh, pretty much a unanimous decision by everybody. And I think it, it shows of your character it shows of your abilities on the field uh, that puts you in the elite class of the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame. Uh, Josh and Jordy, congratulations on being selected as number 167 and number 168 in the elite class of the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame. It is a great honor, and I'm extremely excited, as I said, to welcome you guys to the Green Bay Packers Hall of Fame. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back to Aaron, and uh, we can begin the question period. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate that. Uh, Jordy, we'll start off with you. Do you have some thoughts on, on learning of this honor, and, and what does it mean to you? Yeah, uh, thanks, Aaron. Um, yeah, thank you, Tom, uh, the Packer Hall of Fame, um, the selection committee, everyone that's involved um, throughout the whole process. Um, it's obviously extremely humbling and an honor to uh, – be inducted or going to be selected to be inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, next summer. And just thinking back over the, the 10 years in Green Bay, and I think for all of us, when we step on the field or step into that organization, we understand the honor and the privilege it is to, to wear the G and go out on Lambeau Field and play, but never have in your mind um, to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, I think we have such a day-to-day -day grind, a week-to-week -week grind, and then even year to year that um, we get so locked in on what we're trying to do that um, it's not until after you're done playing or um, you get, you receive the phone call that it truly sinks in that the, that it's going to happen. So um, like I said, it, it's a great honor. I look forward. Um, it's even, I think even a better honor now, uh, Josh and I get to go in together as a draft classmates. And um, I, mean, I think we're both extremely excited. We've already talked a couple of times and, figuring things out um, for August. Um, but honestly, I don't think August 31st can get here soon enough. We're excited about it. We're looking forward to a good time up there, not only at the ceremony, but i um, going to start planning some things probably throughout that weekend to truly enjoy it, see, see some former players and stuff and former teammates and um, really take it in and enjoy it. I think when we play, we don't ever want to talk about our accolades or look back on previous games or previous years. And I, know I personally always said I'll – that's for when you're done. So um, we've been done and now it's an opportunity to sit back, enjoy that time and uh, reminisce and remember only the good times. Um, no more bad times here. But thank you again. Uh, yeah, look forward to it. All right, thanks, Jordy. Uh, Josh, we'll turn it over to you and, and ask the same of you. Uh, thoughts, honors, those sorts of things. Yeah, I mean, I think Jordy, uh, thank the the right people, the the Packers, the whole organization, the Hall of Fame, the selection committee, um, anybody that has any hand in that. Um, thank you very much. It's a unbelievably humbling honor. Um, you know, it's something that I've been dreaming about and thinking about 
um, since, since I left my uh, playing days and, um, I texted one of my coaches this morning and he said, dude, that's no, that's no like Detroit Lions Hall of Fame. That's the Green Bay Packer Hall of Fame. And he was like, you should be unbelievably proud of yourself. And I am, and I'm very thankful to, um, my family, my coaches, you know, you start, you get done and you start thinking about all the people that touched your life, um, to help you along the, along the way. And so many people that had a hand in my success and, I'm just, I'm so blessed to have all these people, the trainers, the coaches, the support staff, the media at times, um, you know, the, everybody that's involved with, it. there's so many people, I think there's four or 500 people on game day that are at Lambo. You know, there's so many people that touch your lives that you don't even see. Um, and it's, it's really cool to sit back, like Jordy said, and get to get a chance to look back and think about all that and think about all those people and think about all those successful games and, all the times we had, you know, some of the greatest times of my life were on the field with, with that guy right there. And like he said, it's such an honor to go in with him, you know, 2008 draft class, we retired the same year. Um, it's an honor to be standing up here next to him because not, not because how good a football player he is, but how good of a guy he is. And it truly means a lot to me and I am deeply honored. Um, so thank you very much to everybody. Thank you, Josh. And uh, now we'll open up the questions for Jordy, members of the media who are on the call, to go ahead and raise your hand, and and I will uh, pick you to ask questions. There we go. Got a few in there. We'll start off with uh, Rich Ryman. Rich, go ahead. Yeah. Uh quick question for each of you what uh, what are you guys doing now um uh, i am back in kansas um just north of manhattan back where i grew up i'm two miles from the house i grew up in um out on the farm doing different things um helping coach different sports coaching my kids through summer sports and basketball and um and then also uh, assistant girls basketball coach to my sister, who's the head girls basketball coach at our high school. So staying plenty busy, enjoying Saturdays at K-State games, especially when they win 48 to zero. Uh, makes for a good time. So um, enjoying life. Um, yeah, having a good time. Yeah, so I am also uh, back uh, at home where I grew up, Pensacola, Florida. Um, I own a construction company and a development company. Um, but I'd say mostly I'm a stay at home dad with a little bit of business and a lot of tennis and working out. Um, I'm a, I'm a trophy tennis husband, I think, um, uh, pretty much kids, tennis, sports, like Jordy said, and uh, a little business here and there. All right. Thanks to both of you. Now I have uh, Wes Hodquist. Wes. Hey, Jordy, uh, congrats. Um, hope you and the family are doing well. You touched on, you know, week to week, day to day, you know, with the NFL, but now that you have had a chance to kind of sit back a little bit, what, what do you remember most about your time in Green Bay? And is there anything that you're most proud of when, when you look back at that 10 year run? Um, man, it's hard to narrow down just certain things, but, um, I think one thing I'm most proud of um, and one thing I always tried to strive for was consistency. Um, being the same person each and every day going in and out of that building, um, same player at the practice field and on Sundays, um, in meeting rooms, everything. Um, and I think that is what got to me to where I am or where I got to through my career um, at all the levels. Um, I think if we look at one individual thing, um, I personally take a lot of pride in the comeback player of the year season, um, not only for myself and what I went through at that time in my career, um, coming off the year I did the year before, and then having to miss a season, spend same as 12 months in a training room. Um, and having that reward at the end of it was very fulfilling, not only for myself, but um, for Nate and Flea and all the guys in the training room that put so many hours um, into that work as well. It was definitely a group effort and to um, 
be able to have a successful season, um, not only by stats wise, but didn't miss a game, didn't miss a practice that whole year. Um, and then be able to be you know, honored in the way I was at the NFL honors. It was great to be able to share that with those guys. Thank you, Jordy. Next, we'll go to Marty Hendricks. Marty. Hey, Josh and Jordy. Um, you played other places uh, in your career. As you look back, you know, playing the smallest market uh, franchise in Green Bay, what made it so special? What were the pluses? What were the minuses? Oh, man. Um, I think it's very interesting. I think my time in Oakland um, was not necessarily what I think a lot of people see it as, where we were able to find a place to live. Um, we ran into great connections of friends of a friend that we had in Green Bay. Um, so it still had, as crazy as it seems, it still had a similar feel. We had our small little friend group um, there. Um, there was horses and cattle and turkeys in my backyard again. So I don't know if it's just me finding those spots that make me feel comfortable. I think uh, so. <laughs> so um, that uh, still had the same feel. But um, I think there's a lot of passion in Green Bay, which I was fortunate to go to Oakland. And I think Raider fans are extremely passionate as well. Um, but I think a lot of it's the history and the passion and then how much it means to them every Sunday. So um, it's to be a part of that history, um, like we mentioned earlier, winning a Super Bowl and kind of having our stamp on that forever, not only just being players and being successful, but to have bring a championship back, I think is what makes what we were able to do there in you know, our career is so special to be able to have that. Obviously we wish we had more, but to get one is um, very special. Uh, Josh, your thoughts on the, on the question? Can you ask it again, please? <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, you know, you played other places. <laughs> Love it, Josh. Uh, you know, and uh, playing in the small market uh, franchise like Green Bay, you know, uh, what made that special? Uh, plus those then minus. Well, yeah, it was definitely different. You know, I went to Chicago and then Miami, and it's a completely different feel. Um, just from the smallest things, like everything being right there, and you know, the longest drive I had in a day was ten minutes. You know, so even on Sundays, I'm driving just to work. You know, whereas in Chicago, and Miami, you got to drive, you know, an hour, hour and a half to get to the stadium. Um, so little things like that uh, make a big difference. And everything is all about football um, in Green Bay, from the fans to the organization to the players, you know, to everybody. Um, and that culture, that winning culture is within everybody. And you can tell the difference the second I walked in, in uh, another place, you can, you can feel a slight difference. The expectation is to win championships in Green Bay. And, I mean, from the – the five-year-old fan to the president to the coach to the new guy on the team you know everybody's expectation is to win championships and that was the biggest difference that I felt when I went um elsewhere uh, and like Jordy said I mean the the fans don't get better um you know because it's a small town they got to interact with us all the time you know you'd see them out everywhere so it's um that was different um and, and that I think is is amazing for the fans and it makes them just more passionate on Sundays. But yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a different place. And I'm so unbelievably thankful to, that I got to start my career there and, and I got the chance by, by Ted Thompson and those guys to be drafted there. Thank you. All right, next we'll go to Seth from NBC 26. Seth. Hi, Jordy. Hi, Josh. Uh, I just kind of wanted to ask, you kind of touched on this a little earlier, but if you had to have fans remember you in one way, what would be the way that you would want to be remembered? Josh, you want to take this one first? Yeah, I got that short memory. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, it, it kind of goes back to the question, like what you're most proud of, or I think the most, the thing that I'm most proud of and what I would want to be remembered by is my ability to be available and my durability um, on the field and my toughness. I, you know, I was fortunate enough to 
avoid injuries and battle through a lot of injuries. Uh, you know, I played in, I don't know, five or six straight seasons at one point. I played like almost every snap. Uh, I didn't come out for a stretch there of a long, you know, a lot of games. And I was proud of that. I, uh, that's one of the things that, that I was most proud of in my career. And I, you know, battled through a lot, battled through a bad back injury, bad toe injury, shoulders, you know, all sorts of stuff. And, um, you know, I can look back and say that I was there and I was available and I can, I could always look at my teammates on Monday and they knew that I was going to be there for them on Sunday and be out there battling. So that's, that's probably what I would, what I would say. Um, unfortunately I did miss games, so I can't give that answer. Um, it's, I think it goes back to what I just did. I was just the same person day in and day out. If I was on the field in the community, um, doing different fundraisers and giving back if it's game day practice, whatever it was. Um, I think one positive of Green Bay that we did mention was that you don't get caught up in the celebrity status of being a professional athlete and um, to be able to stay humble through different things and be yourself and you can be yourself. You don't have to try to run with the actors and actresses or other celebrities. Like it is just us in there. So the guys in the locker room knew, truly knew who you were and like people in the community can truly knew that. So I think who, you know, I think both of us, uh, myself, at who I was day in and day out, um, the same guy, no matter what was going on, I think um, that's how I'd want to be remembered. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Jordy. Any additional questions? All right, Wes, go to you. Hey, Josh, uh, congrats to you as well. Um, you know, you go into the offensive line. You know, there's been several of you guys now, Chad, a couple of years back, Tosh, and there's probably gonna be several more here after you. Just when you look back at that time, I know you guys knew how special that group was, but what stands out to you the most and what did it mean to you to be kind of a all pro in the midst of a, a lot of really special players? Well, I'll tell you, this is what we think about ourselves. We have a group chat that says uh, best Green Bay Packer O-line in history. So. That's that's what uh, that's how we feel about ourselves. But uh, and I would I would even argue that. But, um, you know, we we were pretty darn good. And um, I think it when you look back at how good we were at pass blocking, it's pretty remarkable. You know, Aaron, his signature ability was to run around in the pocket and make plays and throw the ball. And, you know, that would take time. And we were able to hold up and we were able to pass block and, you know, we threw the ball six, 700 times a year. And, you know, that it, it's a, it, it's a toll on you and it builds up, but we were, we we're damn good at it, man. And I, I was really proud of that. Um, and that, I mean, that group was special, that 2014 group, 2015 with David, myself, Corey, um, JC was in there, um, uh, TJ and Balaga, like, that that's a damn good offensive line. And and like you said, some of those guys will be coming up here in the next year or two. Um, and I, I'm really, really proud of that group. And I wouldn't be sitting here without those guys. You know, th those guys made it easy for me to play next to them. You know, I was able to take David under my wing and kind of guide him. And we just played seamlessly. Same thing with Brian. And Brian was young when in my third year. He was starting the, in the Super Bowl. And they were just easy to play next to. Same thing with Corey. He came in as a rookie and played and just balled out. And it was just, they were just easy to play next to because they were so good. They were so coachable. And they just listened to Coach Campy and Campy led us. And he was just such an unbelievable coach. I, I, I got, I mean, I, he was the first person I called when I found out about this because I love that guy so much. He did so much for me. So uh, I'm really, really proud of that group. And man, I, I I really would argue that that, that we were the best uh, Packer O-line. And I know Tausch and those guys would argue that the early 2000s and you argue the 60s guys and all that, but I'd put our that group uh, up against uh, anybody. All right. Thanks, Wes. Now we'll go to Rich Ryman. Rich. Can you hear me now? My mute, my mute was going on and off here. Um, yeah, that was me. Sorry about that, Rich. Was is there one game uh, 
that stands out for each of you guys is just one that you have really fond memories of? Probably an easier question for, for Jordy than for Josh, but I, I imagine linemen have great games too, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that real quick. So <laughs> it, it's it, there's two games that you wouldn't expect. Like obviously the Super Bowl, you know, obviously the NFC Championship, but two games that I just absolutely loved were uh, games that Matt Flynn was starting. Uh, one in Dallas where we came back and won. Um, and I don't know, we were down like, I don't know, three or four scores and somebody gave a halftime speech and we came back and won that game. And it was unbelievable. His whole family was there because he's from Texas. And then the, the uh, Detroit game um, in 2011, the end, the, the last game of the season. He just came in and balled out and, you know, him and I were best friends. So like, we just, I, we had so much fun on the field and those two games just really stick out to me. They, they were just fun. I just really, really enjoyed it and enjoyed seeing uh, Matt go out there and ball out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough. Um, obviously, I mean, sorry, so the Super Bowl, NFC Championship game, um, the whole playoff run, to be serious, honest with you. Um, was kind of surreal because it, I mean, we knew the momentum was coming. It, I don't think we could have found a more confident team at any point in time, even in whether 2015 when we were lost in the NFC Championship. I don't still don't know if we we're as confident as we were when we started that playoff run when we went and got it done. Um, boy, uh, that's I had one, um, at Minnesota 2014, maybe. Um, I don't remember what year it was. Anyway, it was just some crazy throws from Aaron. Um, so um, it was one of those offensive productions that I think when we came in on Monday, they usually hand out a game ball um, to the offensive and defensive player of the week and special teams. And um, I think they gave it out to every offensive player. I, we, I don't know if we got stopped in one possession. I think we scored touchdowns in every possession. James Starks was running the ball. We were the throwing the ball at will. Um, and I think our defense even played great. I, don't, uh, I think it became a blowout. But just those moments when everything was rolling and clicking, which obviously we could probably list a number of games, um, go back to the Atlanta playoff game when things just snowballed and just got way out of control. And just you knew it was, it was a fun time. Everyone was going to have their part. Everyone was going to get a little bit of it all. And it just it snowballed so fast. And um, we fed off of one another, and everyone was enjoying it.